I was not verbal to the moment of saying, slip, or rather shouting. But, you know, they've already seen you up to people shaking by the hand moving them around. It's social compliance, it's also social convention. If I go up to somebody and go, with this hand shake. So I don't need to say a word. And with that, I can just gently pull them so I can move them to the point I want them to stay. I can knock the feet like that, and I've seen them done before, so I'm going to them together. It's then, I understand it, it'll be fine. So the feet are together, so we've got that pivot so they could go. It's fine because what we're going to do is not just shake the hand, we're going to put our finger from this hand against their wrist. This actually makes it easier to move around. It also gives you more strength to take their body when you lower them down without anyone behind them, which is how this is normally done. It gives you far more strength because it's like a splint. It also means with a tiny little touch you can take your arm wherever you want. And now I'm going to talk as I do it. So you move, you come in, they're going to go for a handshake. But I'm going to not do it there because I'm not too far away. I'm going to step in into a slightly unnatural position so that I'm really close enough in that his elbow is going to be here. So with a slight finger move, his elbow can touch against his own body. <coughs> So with a slight finger or hand move this way, his own arm is pushing against his own body here. Which in itself is, oh you see, making the body move. Yeah? Really that make, yeah, really easy. Just that gentle. And the more gentle it is, the less resistant there is. And they're consciously looking at you anyway. I'm now going to stare at the bridge of his nose. I'm not looking in the eyes. But otherwise I'd lose eye contact. I want them to feel uncomfortable, so I'm staring at the bridge of the nose, almost as if I can look through your head. The moment I look, I move the hand up as an unverbal breathing. And then... And I'm getting them to follow my pace. So when I suddenly, after three or four times of breathing in and out, get them to breathe in, and I hold my breath, so I don't let them breathe out, so it's literally... And for a short while, that seems slightly what the screw's going on. That's right, you can be there with me. So at, at the same time as that, what the hell's going on? Because it's not letting me breathe out there. I can gently move the arm, hand in towards the body, which is moving that there to push the body. And, because I'm staring through, there's that weird, as I move my head in slightly, it does sort of give the cross eye yeah. weird feeling. So there's all these weird things going on. And I will, in my own head, as daft as it sounds, be thinking, drop back. Because by thinking that, I will unconsciously muscle move and will be, yeah. And when you put it all together, it will. And it looks, when I look, 
yeah. directly at the bridge of the nose area. Slightly. <coughs> Disconcerting. To the person on the receiving end. Head forward, 
won't bother you, hand away and sleep. Did that make sense to you, sir? Yeah, yeah cool. Round of applause for the questions. We want to call the element or band by handshake induction. Um, slight variation on that is the hand stare induction. If you've got someone on stage and you think, I'm not going to be interested in the job about them, because I love them, because when you did the light and heavy hands, they only went that. So you think I'll leave them for a bit. You might want to leave them down the garden path more. A good way of doing that is giving them a, a ritual or something bizarre to have to focus on so that they think this is part of the process. So that when you come and do something else unexpected, they're not expecting it and they're more distracted so it's more likely to occur, if this makes sense. Now I sort of did that earlier with what I call the hand stare induction with, um, I think it was before lunch with Daz, which was literally just walk up to someone and go, look at your hand there, and it's sort of the same as going in for the handshake, but we leave them staring at their hand. So we've got in, we've got the wrist, but unexpectedly you point at the hand and say, stare at us, keep staring at her. And you go off and you do an induction of a different type on somebody else. While they're doing that, their eyes are getting tied out, looking at the hand, they're thinking, what the thing? hell is going on? And then when you suddenly come up to them and push their hand towards their face, so literally you just go up and go, I'm looking at your hand and I'm straight to my drive. Because they've been, as I know my life, they've been aware in their peripheral vision of other people falling down or closing their eyes, which is enhancing the belief, and, and heightening the idea of the word sleep. When you come to them and do something unexpected and push their hand towards their face, look, if someone pushes their hand towards your face, a natural instinct, other than hitting them, but we're in a context where that's okay because they know you're a hypnotist, is to, my rapid cut glass is tense, someone's going towards your eyes, you tend to close your eyes. <coughs> and the moment they close their eyes and you shout the word sleep, it ties in with, oh my god, my eyes are closed, I must be hypnotised. That's literally what you're doing, you're tricking them over the edge, so to speak. Does this make sense? And all of them have these things in common. Now, what I am going to do is actually want to close your eyes a moment. Please, please do. You're all better for this. It will make sense in a few months' time. Why? And no, I'm not going to come around with lipstick and paint funny faces and all of it, as much as that would be highly amusing uh, to me to do. Um, what I am going to do, you'll understand what I've been doing after I've demonstrated it. Um, and when I do, you're going to go, fuck me, it's that simple. Well, wow, how powerful. Now bear in mind that normally in an everyday stage show environment, that what I'm currently doing while your eyes is closed would have already been done before the show starts. That makes sense in the dressing room. So you wouldn't have to suddenly part way through the show and go, everyone, just do the bed, close your eyes while I set up this next bit. Oh no, 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 no. It would literally be a case of it had already been set up. So that when I wanted to do it, it'd be ready. But as I say, I didn't know what time of the day today I was going to end up doing this particular uh, demonstration. So I've had to do it in this manner, which is fantastic. OK, uh, you can open your eyes. Bear in mind, as I say, that what I've just been doing normally uh, would have been done in advance. Um, my throat is really bad today, I must apologise. <sighs> okay, I need a volunteer, and this is great to use on skeptics, but we've got to shoot an X, this is also give me a round of applause, give me some points. Yeah, it's literally a free choice. The one you're giving me is what we're getting rid of. It's as 
symbol as that. And we're going to do it one more time, maybe rip down the middle and the half to give these buttons get rid of. Okay, fantastic. I'm going to take a piece of foil that you trolls. I'm just going to dip it. I'm just going to dip it in a tiny bit of water like that. Try and get the um, what's it out of that full of creases. Are you right left handed on this? If you're left handed, can you place your left hand down, please? Because obviously, if that's what you normally right is, then that means that your left hand is the right hand to use this for. Now, that may sound like I'm trying to confuse you with some strange man pointing out that the left is right for this rather than the right being the left. Um, and that may be why, in some strange way, in a few moments' time, if we take this action, I'm just going to take it and. Um, you know, it's funny how it can, in light, it can sort of reflect and that can have an effect on the eyes. Which in itself is somewhat slight to trade on, so you want to relax. You want to put it in your hand, close your hand, I want you to imagine, close your eyes, imagine you're for red. Heat, imagine heat travelling down your arm. It's getting hotter and hotter. Imagine that flow getting hotter and hotter. And the moment it gets that hot, that in your mind's eye, your reality is that you'd sooner drop that, then you can drop that because it's not about burning yourself, because the mind can create real burdens in the body. But it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. Do you know, can you start to feel that heat, yeah? You can feel the heat, this is for real, yeah? You can really, really, really feel that in your mind's eye. You imagine it getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. Probably a good idea to open your eyes, open your hand, just drop that heat and just sleep, sleep deeper, 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 deeper. Drifting down, sinking down, drifting down. The deeper you go, the better you feel, and the better you feel, the deeper you go with every breath you take. Blah, 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 blah. Come to three, why don't you around the buzz to go back to the end. To be able to convince somebody that you've said something and it's happened to them as a genuine reality, there is nothing better than this. What you require is some normal tin foil. Or some similar small items. 
and squirt that out in the sink. So you've got rid of it. You then take a glass, very important, a glass, nothing metal. This chemical reacts with metal. Okay, so a glass, and you bump some of the sex text liquid in there. You squeeze your empty bottle together, so that when you put it near the liquid and let go of it, the air sucks the liquid in. So it fills up this bottle with it. So this is easier to carry around in your pocket. So that if you should choose when you're out, it's different in a show, you can do it in the dressing room. But if you're out and about and you want to do this, you can go to the loo for a piss. Right you're in there, bring the cubicle up and set it up. And the setup is this. You want to do the little bottle and you go one drip, that's it, one drip, that's why it lasts so long. Rub it together, finger and thumb. Blow it in, let it dry. Dries pretty quick. We then do a second drip. And a second drip. Rub it together. Blow it in, let it dry. Once that's in place, it's good for doing it maybe four or five times. And you can also rub it on that other finger if you want to see that. Just be aware not to lick those fingers. Okay? Your glass of water is exactly that, on the water. Hence, you can drink from it. So if you think about it afterwards, you go, well, there can't be any chemicals. They weren't saying that because how could they drink water? Well, it is just normal water. All this about the foil is presentation. It's giving the illusion of choice. It really doesn't matter which bit of foil they end up with. That in itself is just a confusion, a disorientation, a ritual like we spoke about. The point is, is to let them end up with a piece maybe about your name, idea. We then say, oh, to cool it down, I mean, this is total science about bullshit. What's the logic? To cool it down, we're just going to dip it in the water. So you do. And what you do is you make sure it only goes in maybe, what can I say? That's about half a centimetre. And when it comes out, you give it a shake. You don't want it too wet. You then say, we're going to straighten it out. Well, as you straighten it out, you're using these fingers and the thumb so that the water gets on the chemical so it can be rubbed around the bloody foil, which means this is now getting covered with this chemical that reacts with air and foil. And after I've sort of straightened it out a bit, and you can start to feel it go warm a little bit between your fingers, you roll it into a loosish ball so the air can get in. And you can feel it in your arm when you say, and you quickly put it in it's too hot now, I've left it too long, you say, close, think of each red, getting hot around it, and they'll drop it. Yeah, and you know what? When they drop it, whoa, fuck, shit, that was hot. <laughs> and I really like them. They will totally believe that the word you said made that happen. And when they drop it, that moment of confusion, that realisation is the perfect moment to get their arm and bust them. And they will go out, it's the perfect instant induction because it's guaranteed that they will feel something happen. And I really do, honestly. Yes, I know I'm selling it as a UK agent for the Caldi Road, but fine, go and buy it off me, get it off Caldi Road, or try and buy it elsewhere and we'll see that you can't. Because uh, the bizarre thing is, they don't sell it anywhere else. In fact, there is, there's one magic that they start selling it now in England, this exact stuff. But they will charge you 25 quid for the same scale of wrong. And it is the most wonderful convincing that it's guaranteed to work. In therapy, I use that as well uh, by way of telling them that I'm going to put the foil in the hand and I want them to imagine heat and transfer that warmth down into the hand. And that when they feel the warmth, drop the foil, which they do, ultimately. And then, not only can it be induction and sleep, you can go and now imagine it in your mind's eye, but just as you manage to purely imagine it with your own mind, make that heat appear in your hand. So you can take that heat that you felt in your hand and place it onto your leg where you've got that arthritis and help that heat go into that area of your body to allow the pain to disappear. <coughs> and in the therapy, there's a technique called glove anesthesia, which is purely imagining your hand warming up and taking that warmth and putting it into the area of the body where the pain is, because the warmth helps it melt away. How much better if they genuinely, physically felt warm to at that moment take that belief and transfer it somewhere else? Because they've genuinely experienced it, so that compounds it and makes it more powerful. On that note, 15 minute break, we'll be back in here for four, please. And then we're going to do some more inductions, tell you how to phrase the suggestions, slot it all together as one final jigsaw, and then you'll be good to go. So you can see if